Howdy, friends. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist again. Uh, what is it actually called? Link Evolution. Okay. So, I played the tutorial for the campaign again, and then I was like, you know what? I haven't played a Yu-Gi-Oh! game, uh, on YouTube in a while. Uh, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Uh, Tag Force 3, bur I got burned out because Chaz was so bad as a partner. And then Tag Force 4, I just was not feeling even a little bit. I'm not, I don't have the, uh... Uh, the nostalgia for 5Ds to carry me through what's a weirdly not well explained designed game. I still want, might go back to it or Tech Force 5, but I just I didn't want to play more of that anytime soon. However, uh, this is a new game. So this just came out on the 20th, so that's good. Um, yeah, I thought I would just go through the duels because I know that's a big thing people like. Um, so for now, I think I'll do. I'll do one from each of them, uh, you know, um, time allowing me, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, actually, here's what I'm going to do. We'll do the classic one first. Um, oh, my special card, what? Oh, that's blue eyes, but with the new art, which is weird. And then Kaiba ripped it in half, and then Yugi was like, Yu-Gi-Oh! And then that's, that's, there you go, that's the story of episode one. For, for more stories, please come to Wrath of Zalus at youtube.com. Um, <clears throat> so if you've played this game before or seen me play it one of 25 times I played it against Carlos, um, then this is going to look a little different to you. And it should. It is different. So uh, the UI is a little different. Like, they... Um, I don't want to say streamlined because that's not true. Um, but basically, I don't know, I remember it being faster. So this is kind of messing with me. This is much bigger, which also messes with me. Uh, because it used to be like a smaller menu. Uh, I already tried, so it shows the controls, which is fine. And then settings. The only thing I really have the option for is skipped auto dialogue prompts, which... Hold to show prompts, press X to check field. Your size window auto skip, press X to check field. I just, uh... Eh. Eh. So I'm just gonna. I'll leave it on simple for now. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it on default for now. Just because I, I don't mind holding B. It just, I thought like the card shuffling stuff was faster, that's all. Uh, so the other thing I noticed that used, used to be auto, but they changed it, is um, uh, you can no longer. Um, Every time you go to set a card, you choose where to place it in the field, which is, that's something they used to let you do um, if you set an option for it in the older Yu-Gi-Oh games. I believe that's because of Link Summoning. I haven't actually done anything. I also noticed that uh, the Pendulum section is now in the Spell and Trap zone, which is interesting to, interesting to me. Um, I've, I know very little about Pendulums. Um, I only know what I learned from this game, ironically. Um, so it seems like they changed it on me. Um, yeah, I'll do the link summoning tool after, the, or tutorial after this, because I don't know how that works, and I'm sure that's going to come up, because I like to do fusion decks, and I don't know if I'm allowed to do that anymore. This card is sent from the field. Oh, right, it's, it's Sangin. Uh, okay. <clears throat> now, obviously, I have to go for the Exodia win. That's just, that's just canon. So once I pull, um... The head of Exodia it should be easier to get the other ones. You fool! I also, it's weird after playing Duel Links for so long to have a Yu Gi Oh game that actually has um, more than three phases. Like, it's weird that there's like a second main phase. I'm not, I don't, I'm not used to that. Even after Tag Force, like, it's, it's just, it's still weird. Well. <clears throat> Alright, I'll hold that back. Um, honestly, there's no reason to play offensively. If I start, if I started off with two Exodia pieces and I already have the head, which is the hardest one to get, so... Here we go! I don't really like the older decks, um, but I also, because I haven't, I have no game save here, I have nothing else I can do in this game. I could start building a user deck, but eh. If we get stuck on, um, 
on a particular duelist, I might build like a quick user deck. But just for the sake of fun, uh, I think if I get stuck against someone, I'll probably build a user deck. But I'll try and make it like the person's deck that's supposed to be. So let's say we get stuck with like... I don't know, let's say we get stuck with Yugi versus Pegasus. I'll try and make what Yugi's deck would be, canonically, but just like a better version of it. Um, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I could play this for a while. I don't really mind um, straight up Yu-Gi-Oh, and this isn't bad. I want to see how many more um, character animations there are. Because... Um, in the original, I think they just had the signature mon monsters for everyone. If I remember correctly, they had the signature monsters for everyone, and then they had, um, like, red eyes. So, like, pretty much just, like, Dark Magician, blue eyes, and then, um, I think one of the Cyber Dragons had one. Or, I, mean, I don't know, someone did. And then, I think it was Neos had his own one. And then Stardust Dragon, Red Dragon, Archfiend... I don't know. I don't think Black Rose Dragon had one. That, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I don't. It's been a while since I have played like this game. Jesus Christ, game! I have two Heart of the Underdogs, and you could not give me a goddamn normal monster. Equip only no monster. Your opponent controls. Take control of the equipped monster during each of your stand by their standby phases. They gain a thousand life points. Nah, I don't need to. I'm purposely holding these cards in case they find some way to get past um, Giant Soldier of Stone. This is where, like, I wish... I'm, you know what it is? I'm too used to the speed-up option from the emulators. Like, I'm just... I'm so impatient now! Um... Alright. That'll work. That'll play. Eh. Um... Oh God, zoning Zodia is so much harder than I remember. Um... What do I want to do here? I guess I'll just set it. Like, I have plenty of cards here to use, but I also don't have, like, a big swinging monster. Like, I don't have Dark Magician, I don't have Summon Skull, I don't have anything that I could, like, start to get rid of his defenses, so there's no point. <clears throat> that was an interesting choice. Dude, I did notice that weird effect when you set. I don't remember if that was there before. <sighs> Another goddamn dark hole. Can you fucking knock it off? Uh, uh, I just... Uh, I'm gonna have to start discarding. Let's play this just to... Nah. I'm shocked. I thought he'd have a real... <laughs> a real big def er, defensive. So the other reason... um. My thought process was, if I was going to play this game, I'm not sure if I want to stick with one series, or if I want to play a little bit of each one. Like, the reason being is that, you know, it's fun to play this game, um, uh, or it's fun to go through Yugi's du duels and then slowly the opponents get harder and harder and harder. Um, the problem with that is, if I keep doing that, and then, um... And then I go to a different series, then I have to start all over with their like very base level cards, and that kind of sucks. But on the flip side of that, um, I guess I would say in further series that their starting decks like are more. There's still more to do with their like starter decks than there is um, in original Yu-Gi-Oh. So I guess that's not that bad. GX might be a little bit rough before they start really getting into fusion stuff. Also, I'm curious how they like change the decks. With um with Link summoning now, okay. Well, that was a very successful Heart of the Underdog, and then we we'll use Graceful Charity. Um, and I think I just won, so let's throw that away. Okay, fine. You're really gonna make me do this game? <coughs> Bam! I'm weirdly uh pretty experienced with Exodia decks. I haven't made one obviously since new cards, but. Um, oh, and they changed the sound effects here. Boop, boom, beep, 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 beep. That's a pretty neat touch. Uh, new booster pack, new deck, new deck recipe, I should say. Um, Avatar unlocked, reverse duel unlocked, Grandpa Moto, Blue Eyes White Dragon, D spell, Gift the Mystical Elf. I mean, Blue Eyes is good. That's not a bad get. 
And then I can't get the reverse duel for this for some reason. Alright, let's fucking bite the bullet. What is, uh... What is Link summoning and how do I do it? What do I need to know here? I know the basics of it's like... The special... The special cards, which is Fusion, Synchro, XYZ. I don't know how Pendulum comes into this. But I know they can only be activated or summoned in slots that like a Link monster links to. In this lesson, I'll explain how Link Summon. A Link Summon is a special way of summoning a Link Monster from the extra deck. Let's take a look at a Link Monster card. Link Monsters have dark blue frames with red arrows. <clears throat> uh, each Link Monster has a Link rating. The, uh, this indicates the number of Link materials you'll need to send from the field of the graveyard to Link Summon this monster. Uh, so Link 3. Links do not have a defense value. They cannot be set. Cannot be. Cannot be set and cannot be in, in defense position. Interesting. Interesting mechanic. Uh, they are also unaffected by the effects that alter defense or change defense position. Previously, you can only summon mo monsters from the extra deck to one of the center extra uh, monster zones. Now you can summon them to the extra monster zone and to any mo main monster zone a link monster points to. Previously, you could only summon monsters from the extra deck to one of the center uh, extra monster zone. Now you can summon them to the extra monster zone and to any. <clears throat> Does that mean they changed how link summoning works? If a link arrow points to an opponent's main monster zone, your opponent can spe can summon an extra... Okay, that's interesting. What's with those two in the middle? That seems weird. <clears throat> hey, I know some of these cards. First, let's get a monster in the field. Summon Card Trooper from your hand. Hell yeah! Card Trooper's a good boy. Now activate Card Trooper to send three cards from the top of your deck from the graveyard. Alright. As is tradition. Let's set Call to Hunting as well. Okay, I know that card. It's good, now it's in their turn. Don't tell me what to do. Just robot. <coughs> well, <laughs> Card Trooper, no! Is Monster Reborn legal again? I really hope not. That card's bananas. Hackworm. If your monster controls no monster, you can special summon this. Jack Wyvern! There's this card, and one face-up monster, then control and target one dark monster. Interesting. <laughs> well. <laughs> Ouch. What now, Mr. Robot? Powerful cracking dragon. Well, <laughs> I like that it almost looks like it didn't know. Or it looks like they removed, or they forgot to remove the, like, template for... What card was actually going to go there? The powerful Kraken Dragon will inflict damage every time we summon a monster with the level. Uh, good thing Link monsters don't have a level. Interesting. Let's play Pot of Greed to see if we can draw cards used against it. This can't be legal. Pot of Greed is never going to come back into play. Great, we can special summon Link Slayer. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Once per turn, you can discard up to two cards and then target that many spell and traps on the field to destroy them. What? That's a ridiculous monster. What the fuck? What type is it? Either Cybers? That's not a thing. That's a that's a bullshit effect. I don't like that at all. It's got the effect of Cyber Dragon with similar attack. Um, and then you can also discard and destroy Spell and Trap. Spell and Trap removal is supposed to be difficult. I don't like that at all. That seems excessive. While you're at it, go ahead and special summon Glow Up Bolt from the graveyard. Uh, this card's in your GY. You can send the top card of your deck to the GY, and if you do, special summon this card. Um, yes, this was this was made with tuners in mind, um, with synchros in mind, I should say. But it's good to know it still works. Dotscaper has been sent to the graveyard. Let's special summon that monster too. Oh, how convenient! If this card is sent here, it's sent to the GY, you can special summon this card. If it's banished, you can special summon this card. You can only use one Dotscaper effect per turn. You can only use only that effect this turn. You can only use. Effect Dotscaper once per duel. Oh, each each effect. I mean, that seems fair. <clears throat> I'm gonna make me play in attack mode. That seems ill-advised. I don't know if you noticed, it has zero attack. Let's get more Link material on the field. Normal summon Drac Draconet. This card is normal summon. You can special summon two, one level two or lower normal monster from your hand or deck in defense position. <laughs> Including deck. That's interesting. That was a lot of uh, summons in one turn. I don't know how I feel about this. This seems uh, this seems excessive. I don't know if I'm if I should allow this. <laughs> now that we have the full field full of monsters, it's time to try your first link summon. 
Each link, each link monster lists what kind of monster can be used as a link material. Link Spider requires one normal monster. Proto Prototron is a normal monster. Link Summon, Link Spider. Link a spider! Um, interesting. So it only points down. What does that mean? The monster you'll send. It only needed one Link monster? That seems like it was a little easy to summon. Okay, so that's the Link Zone. Link monsters can have additional abilities. Link Spider can summon other normal monsters. Use the ability to special summon Galaxy Serpents. I'm still trying to figure this out. It's important to note that Link Monster abilities often only apply to monster zones in this Link arrow. Points to be sure to think ahead in deciding where to place a monster. Let's summon more Link monsters. Decode Talker is a Link ranking of 3. That means that 3 Link materials um, are required to Link summon it. And effect monsters can be used as Link material. So two plus effective monsters, um, and link three gains five hundred. Okay, so decode talker. It's like the monster using link material. Okay, so I, am I actually selecting link spider as one of them? And then I guess it doesn't really matter which ones I pick. So do I, do I only have one link spot? To the opponent and I oh. Hmm, he must be special. Oh wait a minute, hang on. They didn't used to do that. Or I guess they did, but the animations weren't that good. That's pretty cool. Another key thing to remember is that monsters in the extra deck can be summoned to monster zones that a link uh, monster points to. So let's try it out. Synchro summon scrap archfiend. Oh, okay. So he does point to some. Oh hey look. I'm not a big synchro fan, but you know what I do appreciate? Uh, <laughs> monsters I recognize. Okay. So, if I link summon, I can summon two specials. I can also make room in the field by link summoning. Let's summon the link monster Proxy Dragon. Um, two monsters. If a card you control would be destroyed by battle or a card effect, you can destroy one of your monsters. Uh, this card points to instead. Now, like, uh, the card is using link material. Okay, well, that seems like ill-advised. I mean, I just got Scrap Archfiend. <clears throat> so you can summon them wherever, I guess. Now let's special summon Link Infra, infra file Flyer and Turbo Boost to the field. This seems like a lot for my turn. My opponent has been waiting a long time. You can special summon this card from your hand to your zone. A Link monster points to you. can only special summon Link. Okay. That seems pretty understandable. And then Turbo Booster. If you have normal, if you have normal summon a monster this turn, you can special summon the card from your hand. You can only attribute this card to destroy one, or you can attribute this card to destroy one monster your opponent controls that battled one of your monsters this turn. Okay. Link monsters can be used as multiple link material equal to their link rating. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. And Kotaku is a Link 3 monster and requires a Cyber's monster for the material. His proxy Dragon has two Links and Link Infra Flyer. Yeah. That's interesting. That makes sense. It's just not something I would have thought of. Um, yes. While this does seem confusing, I can appreciate it. Let's do that again. I mean, do we have to? First, special summon proxy dragon back from the graveyard with Monster Reborn. Jesus Christ. This has gone on for so long. It's good to know Link Monsters um, can be affected by card return, though. Notice the monster summoned from the graveyard can be placed in any main monster zone. Monsters are only placed in the center, extra monster zone, and they are summoned from the extra deck. Okay. Now, let's use proxy dragon and turbo boost for Link Summon Gaia Saber the Lightning Shadow. That's what a name. That's a Yu-Gi-Oh name if I've ever seen it. Treat this, yes. And then what else do you want? Turbo Booster? Yeah. <clears throat> I do kind of like the theme of these uh, these cards. With everything you've learned so far, now would be a good time to go on the offensive. Switch to battle phase and attack with your monsters. Uh, excuse me, I can still special summon, so... Oh, okay. Alright. So this still counts. I didn't read Cracking the Dragon's effects, but it looks cool. Um, 
I'm still... I get the gist of how Link Monsters work now. It seems like a mix of, um... Uh, what do you call it? It seems like a mix... Oh, scrap our chain, obviously. A mix of, like, XYZ. Or rather, it seems like the natural progression of XYZ. Okay. I'm not completely sure on that, but... It seems fine. <gasps> Compulsory Evacuation Device! I love that card. I hate that card, actually, but it's fun to play with. So I just unlocked Challenge Mode. Did I need to do all the tutorials for that, or... Did I have to just unlock a challenge? Oh, that's right. I think these are unlocked um, by... I think those are unlocked if you... Um, let's just unlock... Oh, I'm sorry. My brain. I think you have to beat your opponent every possible time in the series, so like I have to beat Kaiba like a few more times. Or maybe it's just I have to do the reverse tool. Um, alright, that was pretty cool. Link summoning is interesting. Uh, it seems fairly easy to grasp. I, I will admit, uh, Synchro is definitely the most complicated for no reason. And even then, it's not that complicated. It's just get a tuner and then get the level indicated. If you know what cards you're trying to go for, it's not very difficult. To, but, um... As, in terms of jank, of just throwing shit together, I would say uh, fusion's pretty good because it either lists the specific monster you need or the type of monster. And then you just need polymerization or one of those. Uh, but I would still say XYZ is probably the easiest because it's just like two level four monsters and you're like, all right, that's easy enough. But after that, I would say probably Link Summoning and then Synchro and then Pendulum at the fucking top because it's a it's not hard to grasp, it's just hard to utilize if it's not then if your deck isn't entirely built around it. Like you can throw XYZ synchros synchros to an extent, but you can throw XYZs, you can throw fusions and shit into a deck and just kinda make it work. And it seemed like Link Summoning could be done like that too, but I don't think you could just throw in fucking pendulum monsters and hope it works. But uh, I'm curious to see how pendulum has changed. Let's see that actually. Cause so I wanna see um Alright, I just, uh, is this not a tutorial? I don't, I don't know what any of this is. Actually, I did see that episode. Basically, it's like, oh. They do a weird thing where he discovers how to pendulum summon in his fucking first duel. Out of nowhere. And then it's just kind of like, wait, huh? How did he, that doesn't, that's not fair. First shape pendulum work. These cards can be played as either monster cards or spell cards. Once you play two pendulum monsters as spells in the pendulum zone, you can perform a special pendulum summon. All right, so that's about what I thought. Since they do as so much, they have two text boxes on them depending on how they are played. Uh, if you activate your pendulum card as a spell, it stays in the field, and you can use it on the pendulum effect right at the top. You can also summon or set a pendulum monster card. This is my cup. I think so. I think I still get the gist of pendulum monsters. Um, it's just more of... It was just trying to get the... The gist of this. Uh, and it's just... All it seems like is they just changed it so it's part of the spell and drop card zone. Which, if I'm being honest, that seems like a pretty good... Uh, pretty good counter for that. Um, what are you... What? Did I do this wrong? Oh, Time Gazer Magician. Okay. Okay, and summon once during your turn. Uh, in one pendulum summon, you can summon as many monsters as you want from your hand. Open the face up pendulum monsters in your dexter deck, yes. So, pendulum summon. I can only summon these two because they're the only ones whose levels are between the pendulum, which makes sense. I can grasp that much. Uh, I can't. What? What is his signature? Is it Odd Eyes Dragon or is it Pendulum Odd Eyes Dragon? Or Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Mm -hmm. What's your effect? Pe perform pull seem okay, or perform pal. I forget what they're called in, um, uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember what they're called in the, uh, the show. Odd Eyes has, a dra has an effect, does it? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <clears throat> Activate the effect of Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. In phase, you can destroy this card if you do add one Pendulum Monster from, uh, yeah, why not? Um, I think this one, right? Because when a pendulum monster gets destroyed, it goes to the extra deck, so that... So, the point of that was that 
Now I can summon it next turn. Feast of the Wild, I know that card. I know these cards. Oh, baby. They're gonna play that giant fucking ogre battle one, right? Yeah, Battleguard King. You know what bothers me about Battleguard King and it shouldn't? Is I get that it's supposed to be a combination of lava and swamp Battleguard, but it really just looks like an enhanced lava one. It doesn't look anything like swamp Battleguard. And that's racist. Alright, so he's gonna attack the shit out of us. Which makes sense. Did it activate those effects automatically? I don't remember. Oh, I haven't played Stargazer Magician, that's why. Okay. So this is gonna be easy. Or not easy, but what the computer is about to show me is that Pendle Monsters are very difficult to kill. Um, so if you, you can Pendulum Summon. Now choose. What is this? Oh. Why is it saying I can only do up to two cards? I missed that part. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if... I wonder if it limits how many you can summon from the extra deck. See, that's cool. That's a much better animation than it had before. Alright, Konami. I'm glad you hired an intern to spend years making summon animations, so thank you. Um... Still don't want someone to have a friend donkey. Oh my god, what the fuck? I guarantee that friend donkey's name has something ass in its name. Um, in the real thing, it has to. Let's see, I don't know. I don't know how these effects work, and I don't care to learn them right now. I just wanted a refresher on pendulums, and I pretty much got what I needed. Uh, the only thing I'm still curious on is why I couldn't summon him. It seems like I should have been able to. Um, let's, uh, for a turn during, you can target one face up. Let's switch to attack and defense. Oh boy. Let's switch to battle phase. Oh, right. Okay. And then they've got their own effects. Alright. Well, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have nothing against Pendulum Monsters, but it's good to know how they changed. Um, Alright, let's just skip that nonsense. Trade Bait. Um, Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer Wild Battle Guards. Triamid Technology. Oh, I think I know Triamids. They, I think they added those to Duel Links. Um, they work really well with Rock Monsters. So they work in Magnet Warrior decks, which is dope. Uh, see, the mo thing I'm most excited for is getting to play this, like... Sure, it's going through the stories and going through the challenges again, because that, that was a lot of fun on the PS4 version. Um, but it's also the updated card list, I hope. Because um, that'll be kind of fun, because there's a lot of cards that I really... What I like about the games like this, it's like, you pay a one-time fee, sometimes with DLC, to like unlock extra cards. But it's like, you basically pay for it and you unlock all of the cards at once. You just have to unlock them through progression instead of paying for them. And it's a lot of fun to, like, make different decks and stuff. I made, like, <sighs> dozens of different decks in the PS4 version. And honestly, when it comes to, like, straight-up Yu-Gi-Oh!, I think these have been the best version of this. The story mode is lacking, but it exists. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, obviously, Tag Force is special because there's, like, you know, you, uh, A, there's tag duels, and B, you can, like, wander around... Uh, the island or junk city or satellite city, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, and you could, uh, you know, talk and get dialogue options with stuff. But that, that always seemed so pointless because it was just such, like, boring dialogue that I didn't really enjoy it. But this is just like, hey, we focused on the card game. There's also some, like, text cutscenes. And I'm like, alright, you know what? That works for me. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you want to see more of this. Um, I'm excited to do more of it. Um... I'm not really at a point where I can play on my own too much, so I might just bang out the other what four tutorials: the uh, the the GX one, Five Ds, Zexel, and um, no, I did RV, so three tutorials. Um, I might just bang those out just to get them done, so I can continue with the story. And yeah, if you guys want to see more, let me know. Uh, I'll be excited to play it because it's been a while since I played a Yu-Gi-Oh game, and this seems like a really good substitute for that. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time. Oh, fuck, you know what? I can make Carlos buy this. <laughs> yeah, and then we can, uh... 
And then we can start dueling in this again. Oh, man, I forgot I forgot that was an option. All right, yeah. So, expect more. I'll see you guys soon. Adios. Welcome to the July Patreon uh, and YouTube sub. Thank you guys once again for another amazing month. The anniversary stream went wait, went wait, 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 went great. Um, and, yeah, let's get started. Uh, I want to thank... Um, Annie, Norm P, Sean, and Rev for the $1, Carlos for the 2, Azor for the 3, Happy for the 5, uh, Mons for the 5 as well, and then, uh, I'm trying to do it from memory, hold on, Sir Anyak, Connor Soverwald, and Sean Thomason for the $10, and straight atop their throne, we have Michael Smith and John Barnett with the $15 each, thank you guys so much, love you all, uh, and then for YouTube, <clears throat> we have C. Miller, Mayo with the 1 month, Michael Smith, Electric Narwhal, Rap Tax for four months, and then John Barnett, Louisa, Sir Eniac, and Maz with the five months. You guys are almost Metal Greymon, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, thank you guys again. Don't forget, if you uh, put $5 down on YouTube, or if you put even as low as a dollar on Patreon, you get access to a special tab in the Discord. It's a secret, don't let anyone know about it. Um, that you can see all the early videos uh, and stuff there, so... Lots of fun. Like, I just recorded nine videos yesterday. It's not... I'm not going to release nine videos publicly today, but those will be up, you know, within the next couple days. So, you know, if you want to see your early videos, if you're like, damn, Nick just doesn't upload enough videos. He doesn't upload fast enough. When can I see the next Metal Gear Solid video that we all clamor for? I... Th there you go. Go on Patreon or YouTube, either. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys, and I can't wait to see you in the next month. Goodbye. Goodbye.